Today is a day of your vitality. If you have prostate cancer, you still want vitality. Fighting cancer like a man means applying all the things that keep us vital while we're fighting cancer. Do not accept the compromise of your vitality in the vain hope of affecting the quality and length of your life. I'm gonna be talking about things you can put into your body, supplements and nutraceuticals that you can use to strengthen immune function, to support your fight, and most importantly, maintain your vitality. It is, in fact, a great time to be alive. Today is a day of your vitality. If you have prostate cancer, you still want vitality. Fighting cancer like a man, folks, it means applying all the things that keep us vital while we're fighting cancer. Do not accept the compromise of your vitality in the vain hope of affecting the quality and length of your life. You'll end up 0 for 2. I'm going to be talking about things you can put into your body, supplements and nutraceuticals that you can use to strengthen immune function, to support your fight, and most importantly, maintain your vitality. My interest in helping men with prostate cancer and elevated PSA and abnormal prostate MRI, my interest in that is an extension of my study and experience with anti-aging and life extension medicine. Yes, that's a real thing. Yes, we can affect how we age. You do not need to wither before you leave the planet. There's nothing about the aging dynamics that is biologically essential. It is simply a matter of figuring out how to alter the trajectory. One way to do that is to neutralize the overabundance of free radicals. Now, free radicals are molecules lacking an electron. They attack our cells. They can damage our organs. They're also essential to life. You need them when you're infected. You need them when you eat food to break down and digest the food. The issue here is one of balance. Right? As we get older, we make more free radicals. We make fewer antioxidants. One of the most important antioxidants Alpha lipoic acid can be given as a supplement. It's a safe substance that our bodies make, and it has kind of cool anti-cancer attributes. One way it seems to work, in addition to neutralizing free radicals, is to interfere with the ability of cancer cells to make energy. That's a pretty neat trick. Cancer cells make energy through a process called aerobic glycolysis. They are making lactic acid in a setting of abundant oxygen, which is not normal. That's a process that Dr. Warburg identified called the Warburg philosophy or theory of cancer propagation. I believe it has a lot of validity. This is part of a metabolic process that is felt to underpin cancer, starting at a mitochondrial level. So we're taking alpha lipoic acid because it's good as an antioxidant has anti-aging supportive attributes, and mucks up cancer cells' attempts to make energy. It's important, folks, because cancer starts cellular. You can't feel it in its state of origin. It can take seven or more years for it to become a centimeter in diameter. So we need to be vig vigilant, proactive. If you've ever had cancer, or you have a high PSA, or just want to do things to make it less likely to happen. Alpha lipoic acid also has been shown to interfere with the um, epithelial to mesenchymal transition. This is the process that cancer cells use to metastasize, to move outside of their original space, pack other parts of the body. So I love this supplement. It's been shown to help induce cancer cell death as well as interfere with the, uh, their nutritional source. So add that to your regimen. How about another supplement? Melatonin. Now, melatonin has a reputation as being a, an asset with sleep induction. Melatonin is a natural hormone made in the pineal gland in your brain. We release more of it at night when sleeping. Therefore, it has that association. Not really great as a sleep-inducing agent, although it can help regulate sleep. It's interest, my interest in it for you when it comes to fighting cancer, is its ability to strengthen the immune system. It's been shown to amplify the effect of immune function, which is really the cornerstone way that you fight cancer. 
I like this as well because of its safety profile. It should be taken in the evening. Melatonin, I like this in a range of up to 20 milligrams at night for the purpose of fighting cancer. That's way too high if you're otherwise feeling good. If you don't have cancer, I don't recommend that high a dose. By the way, the dose for alpha lipoic acid I like is I take 600 milligrams every day, my routine, baseline. It can go as high as three times a day, but really, folks, three times a day, who does that? That's hard. That's hard. Remember, simplicity and sustainability. What's the evidence with melatonin? This is a cool study. They looked at men with prostate cancer. In this study, they had advanced malignancy, metastatic. And they had one group on melatonin, another group on a placebo. The group on melatonin survived on average, yeah, here it was, 153.5 months versus 64 months in those who were not using it. Now, you have to bear in mind, the uh, folks in this study had advanced malignancy, advanced metastatic prostate cancer. How would it work if you had an elevated PSA but no metastatic process, if it's isolated to the gland? Although that's an unknown variable, I like the effect it had in this particular study. I think it's reasonable to then extrapolate it. It works in part by affecting MMP, matrix metalloproteinase. MMP is a stuff that helps cells stick together. It's the intracellular matrix. Cancer cells have a sneaky trick. They break that down. The cells become loose enabling cancer cells to find their way forward. By keeping them tight, by blocking that matrix metalloproteinase, you can inhibit cancer cells' ability to move out. This is kind of cool. It's cellular. It's basic biological principles put to work. No, there's not a blood test you can use to measure this. But we know from research how the process works. And now you know there's at least a clinical study demonstrating extension of lifespan without compromising your vitality. Big distinction. All right, men with prostate cancer, we all have, as you get older, inevitably the prostate gland gets bigger. And in many men, it starts to create symptoms, urgency, frequency, waking up at night. Cancer and prostatic hypertrophy live together. In all the MRIs I've done over the years, it is exceedingly rare to see pure prostate cancer in the absence of prostatic hypertrophy. Those two things kind of coexist in many cases. So the supplements that can help prostate cancer have double benefit if they can help the lower urinary tract symptoms, LUTS, LUTS, frequency, urgency, waking up at night. So pigeon bark, which contains a large amount of beta cytosterol, is another uh, nutraceutical, comes from, well, the bark of a plant that has been shown to actually reduce urological symptoms in men. There was a study done in human beings, and it demonstrated a significant improvement in urinary flow measurements. What about cancer? Studies in cancer are tissue-based, and in mice, they are both favorable in tissue cultures, it was shown to induce, induce cancer cell death. All right, I like that. Safe nutraceutical that kills cancer. Well, how about in organisms? There was one in mice showed a reduction in prostate cancer between the mice who were on the pigeon bark versus those on a, on a placebo. They gave mice a placebo. Well, you know, it's science, folks. 62% of the mice on the pigeon bark were free of cancer, reduction of the rate versus 35% on the placebo. So in summary, the pigeon bark correlated with benefit preventing prostate cancer in the mice. In men, improves the urinary symptoms. Safe, possibly effective regarding cancer, helping with urinary flow. What's not to like? Put them all together. Another nutraceutical, a plant-based supplement called nettle root or stinging nettle has that name because the plant itself has little prickly things on it that sting when you touch it. Nobody said naming plants was particularly clever. Men who use stinging nettle has anti-inflammatory value. It's interesting to note that most men with urinary symptoms waking up at night 
Notice a waxing and a waning of that symptom. It gets worse under stress and inflammatory states. It decreases when they're otherwise feeling well. If you're suffering with this symptom complex, you may notice you go on a flight. I've seen men go on a flight and end up in urinary retention. Inflammatory cascades do that. Stinging nettle, nettle root, helps reduce inflammation. It's been utilized for allergies, autoimmune diseases, and yes, it may help with prostatic symptoms as well. Study done in men, this was a human study, 81% of the men who were using stinging nettle noticed a reduction in the urinary symptoms versus 16% on a placebo. Safe, shown efficacy in research studies. The dose for stinging nettle between 500 and 1,000 milligrams per day. The dose of the pigeon bark, by the way, was 50 to 100 milligrams a day. These are four supplements that have value. Now I'm going to go forward in my next podcast talking about others. I'd like you to process this information. Be slow to add things to your regimen. Be careful about products that have not undocumented amounts of different supplements. They may have pigeon bark, beta sterol on the label. I want to know the milligram amount. Sometimes they do that for recognition marketing purposes. So be thoughtful about what you apply. Use this information you're gathering to your benefit. Keep fighting cancer like a man and do not get any more biopsies. If you've had them done already, okay, you can't go in the Wayback Machine, but stay tuned into my podcast. Let's find a way to change how this is approached. Change that'll keep you vital, keep you strong, but control these symptoms. Let your body do its work. All right, folks, until next time, thanks for tuning in.